Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Steve Cameron here with you on WITS Radio Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic, lies, lies, lies. Who is the king of lies? Who is the author of lies? Jesus says he is, he is the lie himself. He is the perpetuation of lie. He is what encompasses and what is intrinsically false by his very nature now, Satan. Praise God. Only God knows why, why Satan did what he did. But he's a liar and the author of all lies. And... Um, we also, as a society and as Christians, unfortunately, um, battle, battle with falsehoods, battle with lies, and battle with um, deceit. Because lie and deceit, <laughs> there, there's a fine line. Yes, there is. And believe me, the politicians know how to... Um, work on that on that fine line and 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 you know put their toes on it and 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 balance do that balancing act between what is deceit and what is a lie and to god folks deceit is deceit there is only one deceiver ultimate deceiver and that is the devil and so we're going to talk today about lying and i'm not myself I am not um, immune to the temptation, uh, nor the history. I'm not immune to a history. I have a history of where there was falsehood. There was lies that came out of my mouth, uh, as well as I, I deceived myself for many years. And so, you know, I'm not talking out of the side of my face. I'm not judging. I'm not calling everybody liars. But the Bible tells us that um, we're not to lie. Liars don't make it into heaven. Wow. And so if we all lie and we all fall short of the glory of God and we all sin, how can we even make it into heaven? Again, as we receive the holiness of God through the forgiveness of God, through the indwelling spirit of God, we also receive a covering of our sins. We receive, the, 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 that's the whole purpose of the blood of Christ, right? He, he he paid the price, the penalty for our sins. And so we need to be in a lifestyle of repentance. That's the Christian lifestyle for every single sin. Today we're talking about lies, but for every sin, we must live a lifestyle of repentance. And my brother James Martinez, who is our revival preacher at Abundant Life Center, preached that just a couple of Sundays ago. It's a lifestyle of Christians. We must we must repent on a regular basis and admit our sins. And just last Sunday, I spoke about checking our inner Pharisees. I got to daily check my inner Pharisee so that I don't deceive myself. The Pharisees believed they were the children of God. And yet when God came down in the flesh, they not only denied him, they put him on a cross. The apostle Peter himself before he, before he was the mighty preacher that he was, denied Christ three times. And Jesus actually looked him in the eyes and said, get behind me, Satan, because Peter was speaking a falsehood that he wouldn't allow Jesus to go on the cross. And who's going to stop God from doing what God wants? He said, get behind me, Satan. Can you imagine Peter's <laughs> Peter's look on his face and, and the confusion that must have been on Peter's mind. Why are you calling me Satan? I'm saying I don't want you to go to the cross. Well, he didn't know the complete truth and he was speaking out of ignorance. And when we speak out of ignorance or speak in a way that we try to um, create a narrative for people uh, to think a certain way instead of the what is the truth, instead of to what is the truth, then we are liars. We're liars. And so, you know, I, I, I want to talk about the white lie, the little white lie. And we all, whether we like it or not, must admit that we have lied. And we have lied on large scale and on small scale. We have lied verbally. 
uh, an outright lie saying something that absolutely wasn't true. We've lied by uh, telling somebody something even out of, you know, the desire not to hurt their feelings. We told them something that wasn't true. And I'm sure all of us have talked about people behind their backs creating a narrative about somebody when we didn't know the full story and we don't know the life of that person. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, what can we do to control this lying? Well, first, of course, we got to pray. we got to ask God to forgive us for lying every time a lie comes out of our mouth. As soon as it comes out of our mouth, even if we're lying to somebody, we say, sorry, that wasn't true. Let me, let me tell you the truth. Um, and we also have to, you know, be quick to hear and slow to speak. Like the Bible says, we need to be wise about our words. And that's hard in today's society, especially when we have a culture that lies to themselves and deceives themselves. You know, a man can say he's a woman when that's a lie. And a woman can say she's a man when that's a lie. It's not the truth. People say that there is no God. That's a lie. Okay, um, people say that God uh, is a certain God and wants us to live in a certain wave of prosperity with all this financial gain and he wants us to be rich and he wants us to be famous. And um, that's a that's a lie. And we want to call these things lies of the devil so that we are clear when you speak a lie, it's of the devil. Okay, when you speak a lie or I speak a lie. It is from the devil, about the devil. It's all about deceit, all about deceit. And there are six things that the Lord hates, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. And as we go through the list, seven that are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, and here's the second one, a lying tongue. And there's, you know, of course, there's seven things uh, that, are, you know, God doesn't like that. God hates six things that God hates, and seven uh, are, are an abomination to Him. So, lie is number two. Think about that. You know, uh, prideful eyes and then a lying tongue. So, to be number two on the list, that's, uh, that's significant, especially in the Greek and, or Hebrew culture. Uh, putting that first matters. And so, what does the Bible say about deceit? Besides that, okay, there's there's lots of things that the Bible says. Psalm 101, 7. This is Old Testament, right? No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue before my eyes. You know, um, let's go to the New Testament. Romans 16, 18. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. That would be the government right now, uh, this administration, in a nutshell, man. Just lies and deceit. Lies and deceit. And believe me, politics, politicians throughout all history, lies and deceit. Um, 1 Peter 3.10 Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. If you want, if you want to love life and see good days, what does that mean? If we lie, we're not going to see good days. There's trouble that comes with lying. Not only the punishment of God, but the, the, the punishment, it's a law, folks. It's a law. You reap what you sow. God put that into our existence. And if, it, if he says we're going to reap what we sow and we sow deceit and we sow lies and we sow not telling the truth, we sow telling a lie, then we're going to reap the harvest of that lie. And, you know, it's been said before that when you lie, there's a lot of work you got to do to keep up that lie. A lot of work you got to do to keep up that lie. You know, uh, some people ask uh, about, you know, uh, the Pentecostal apostolic um, uh, culture that w w our women, you know, largely don't wear makeup, don't wear a lot of makeup or, or don't wear any makeup. And there's a reason for it, yes, uh, because we're trying to walk humbly and be moderate about things and not, you know, n not become uh, something we try to dress in a manner uh, that doesn't cause other people to sin. 
okay? And so I know there's a level of that that pleases God, and there's a level of that that can be uh, used for uh, legalism that, that's not good. Um, so you've got to be able to navigate things and, and the works that we do for the Lord uh, to do unto Him and not just to be seen by men and, and not to add things to the Word of God. But in our conviction, you know, we dress a certain way and many of the women do not wear makeup. And I'm actually very glad that my wife doesn't wear makeup. I'm very glad. And uh, I, I, there's a level of <laughs> there's a level of false advertising, folks. You know, uh, we put on masks, we put on a bunch of makeup, and 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 then we take it off, and that's who we really are. We are who we are when we wake up in the morning. I mean, and yes, we should present ourselves. We should clean ourselves up if we can. We should comb our hair. We should bathe on a regular basis if we can. There's people that can't. Um, but uh, uh, we do have a certain amount of. Um, I, I would say, um, oh, what's the word that I would use? We have a certain level of self-respect and, and honoring God's vessel. This is, our bodies are God's vessels. They belong to God. And, you know, we are not our own. Um, so our bodies we put under subjection to the Lord Jesus Christ. And part of that is, is not to false advertise, you know. If I walk around in a shirt and I, I put in fake muscles underneath the shirt, I mean, right? Somebody, oh, he's a buff guy. I'm not. And then I go home and I take off my muscles. It's just silly. It's actually silly to me now in my old age when I think about those things. You know, when I was younger, I used to, I used to wear bigger shoes with bigger heels so that I would be a little bit taller and appear a little bit bigger. Um, how silly. You know, there's guys that stuff socks in their shoes so that they can appear bigger. Now, don't get me wrong. There's also people who can't afford shoes or they get hand-me-downs. And so they have to wear shoes that don't fit. But that wasn't my situation. I was trying to look bigger. I was trying, you know, trying to look more macho, trying to look, you know. And I'm a small guy. I'm five foot six, And um, that's who I am. And, and as, as a young person, I really didn't connect with who I was. I was trying to be somebody else in, in many ways. And that's what our youth are doing today. You know, identity is a huge thing and we lie to them. The government lies to them. Parents lie to them. The schools lie to them. Uh, God doesn't lie. We are who we are and we are who God made us. Not who we want to be. Not who we long to be. Not who we wish we were. Okay, no matter you put on contact lenses, no matter whether you put on makeup, no matter whether you, how you dress to hide certain things, you are who you are. As tall as you are, as short as you are, as fat as you are, as skinny as you are, as, um, you know, who, who, beauty is in the eye of the beholder because you were all beautiful to God. But uh, whatever you think of yourself, really, we should be thinking how God thinks of us. And God says we are wonderfully made beautifully and wonderfully made and thank you lord for that he tells me he tells me that he loves me he loves me so much that he died for me and those are the truths that i know and i gotta stop this lying folks i gotta stop this lying put away all malice all deceit all hypocrisy all envy and slander first peter 2 1 ephesians 5 6 warns us paul says let no one deceive you with empty words empty words empty promises i promise i promise that's a lie if we can't keep that promise. And it says because of being deceived, because of deceiving people, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. It's obedient not to deceive. So let's use an example of a white lie, a little white lie. Okay, I'm going to use a Christian and a non-Christian example. First, we'll use a non-Christian example. Uh, somebody that you love dearly invites you to lunch or dinner to a restaurant that you cannot stand. The food makes you want to puke. It's horrible. You can't stand this place, and it's the place they want to take you. <clears throat> and so you go. You don't want to hurt their feelings. They're taking you out. They want, they're want. they sharing something with you that they like. So you want to experience it, and so you do not judge them, <clears throat> and you don't you know, tell them, ah, that place is nasty. I don't want to go there. How about somewhere else? Uh, that's rude, obnoxious, okay? So you go there. But then while you're sitting there eating, they ask you, 
So how do you like this place? What do you say? What do you say? You don't want to hurt their feelings. You have to tell the truth in love. And there's not an easy answer for that. What would I do? What would I say? Oh, I asked my wife that question yesterday. What would you say? And um, if she was really brought down to it and they said, well, no, no, I really want to know what you think of, of this place. She would have said something like, well, normally I wouldn't come here myself. But I thank you so much for inviting me. And then, you know, if they say, well, you really don't like the food, you might have to say, well, you know, uh, this, this, you know, it's not my place, but I, I came because you invited me and I really appreciate it. And it might disappoint them, but, but you got to do it in love. And so I liked her answer. I did. But I thought to myself, I would probably say, yeah, well, this meal is not that bad when it probably was. Why would I say that? Because I don't want to hurt their feelings. Because I care so much about what other people think way too often. And I want to shape the way they think about me as well. Because at the end of the day, right, if we say the truth in love, that might make somebody not appreciate what we're saying. Well, I preach the gospel from the pulpit and from my website and from this very ministry right here, from the podcast. I'm speaking and I need to be speaking the truth because if you discover that I don't tell the truth and I just say things to make you happy, why bother listening? You want to know what God thinks. You want to know what the Bible says. You want to know which way we should walk. And so I got to be careful not to lie. Okay, so there's the non-Christian situation. It could be a Christian situation as well, but let's take it to church, okay? Pastor preaches a sermon and it was boring. You had to work to stay awake. It was the least dynamic, monotone preaching you've ever heard, and it wasn't biblical at all. He barely touched on any scriptures. It was not a good exegetical. It was not a good hermeneutic. It was not a good preaching at all. It was horrible. And your pastor asked, so how do you think? Or if it was a guest preacher, they asked, so what do you think of the sermon? What are you going to say? <laughs> what are you going to say? If it's your pastor, <laughs> and it, he was just on an off day, <laughs> what are you going to tell him? He's the man of God. You're going to insult him? Wow, that's hard, right? But God tells us, don't deceive him. If you love him, tell him the truth. The Bible also tells us, Paul tells us, if your brother doesn't eat meat and he only eats vegetables, sit and eat vegetables with him. But at the same time, tell him, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm eating with you and thank you so much for offering me the food that you did in your home and I'm eating these vegetables. And the guy says, no, I, know, I don't want you to eat meat anymore. Hey, thank you for, I will sit and eat vegetables with you and I will not eat meat around you, but I'm still going to eat meat. God says I can eat meat and I'm going to eat meat. You have to be able to tell the pastor. You have to be able to tell the guest speaker the good things about the sermon. And you could be honest about that. Whatever scripture he spoke on, say, I wrote down the scripture, brother, that you spoke about. Well, how did you like the sermon? <laughs> I wrote down the scripture, brother, that you preached about. But then he starts really get, wanting to answer, was it a good sermon or not? I truly enjoyed the topic. Okay, see, see, you're telling the truth, but he's getting frustrated. He wants your approval. And now you got to be honest and you got to be careful. Man of God preaching the word of God, but you can't lie. So what would I say, brother Steve? What would you say? Whew. I'd say, brother, I got to be so careful. I'm sure that you are a very dynamic preacher. And maybe it's an off day for me. I don't know. But I, I, I personally, here's the key. See, personally, in my opinion and in my opinion only, it was hard for me to stay connected to that message. I don't know what it was, brother. It was a good topic. It was a good scripture. Um, but, you know, I'm, maybe I'm so used to just more dynamic preaching. Maybe it's because I'm so Pentecostal slash apostolic. I like a lot of, you know, yelling and screaming, sometimes being in, 
introduced into certain parts of the scripture of, of the sermon. But I don't know. For me, what resonated at the end of the day was the word, the scripture itself, and um, you know, and 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 I really appreciate your your sermon. Maybe he'll let it die. <laughs> maybe he'll say, "Okay, thank you, brother. I appreciate your input." Or maybe he'll even ask for more. What could I have done better? Now, see, now there's an awesome man of God, right? That's how I should be. You don't like my sermon? Maybe it's not the topic. Maybe it's how I'm talking. Maybe it's how I speak. Maybe it's that I, it seems like I talk down to people and you want to tell me. I want to know that so that I can change something if it's harsh and offensive. Because the Bible tells me when I preach the word, I'm not supposed to be purposely offensive. I'm not supposed to, because I know I'm going to offend. And I know I need to preach boldly. Okay, and no one's going to stop me from preaching boldly. But that doesn't mean that you purposely go out there to judge people and to condemn them and, and, <clears throat> and to make yourself look high and to make them look low. We're to lift our brethren up. So I need to know the truth. I will become a better teacher and preacher when people tell me the truth. I will become a better husband when my wife tells me the truth. I will become a better parent when my children and grandchildren tell me the truth. So all of us should be truth seekers. Now, if we're truth seekers, then we'll understand that other people also deserve the truth. And since God is truth, we need to have the truth coming out of us at all times. We can't be caught up in the lies, lies, lies. Okay? Oh, Lord, help us. Father, help us speak the truth in love. Help us recognize moments where we seem to be deceiving ourselves or others. Give us that Holy Ghost unction, Holy Spirit unction to say, oh, oh right here, right here. This is where you're going to lie. This is where you need to be honest and careful. And then maybe we won't be so quick to speak, so quick to lash out, but think very carefully about how we speak so that we do not twist the truth to make a narrative. Because, because the devil lies, but he also tells the truth. Now, wait a minute. If he's the author of lies, then he never speaks the truth. Yes, he does. He used scripture to tempt Jesus. He used actually what God said and twisted it. He changed it, augmented it to Adam and Eve so that they were deceived. So using half-truths and a little bit of truth to complete a lie. So, ooh, think about that for a minute. If God is truth and I'm using God's truth and using God's word to create a lie, that's pretty blasphemous now, isn't it? Yeah. So that's the devil. That's not us. We don't twist the word of God for our own desires. We don't twist the word of God so that we can have our quote-unquote own religion. We don't twist the word of God so that we can make other people agree with our um, with with our convictions in certain areas of our life that are not biblical. Um we, we don't want to do that. We want to speak the truth in love. Just like Jesus did. Let's use Jesus as the perfect example. Jesus spoke the truth in every way. He lived a perfect life. He had to. So that that perfect life could now live inside of us through the Holy Spirit. So, praise God. Let's, let's be more like Him. That's the whole purpose of Christianity, right? Christianity is to be Christ-like. And that's what we are trying to do every day, more and more. Be conformed to the image of Christ instead of being conformed to this world, the flesh and the devil. Now the world is going to deceive and deceives more than, more than uh, you know, uh, we, we, we give it credit for. The news deceives. Talebearers and, and people who gossip, it's all deceit. Because if you're not hearing it firsthand, and even then when you're hearing it firsthand, is the person really telling you the truth? Only God knows the truth about everyone. God knows my heart. God knows my thoughts. God knows my lies. And he knows yours too. 
So, oh, again, in Jesus' name, Lord, help us. Help us not to lie, but tell the truth in love. You can find more, not just podcast opinion, although I try to keep it very, very sternly, very, very directed in the biblical worldview. I do insert my opinion in these podcasts where I may not insert my opinion and try not to insert my opinion um, from the pulpit or from any videos uh, from other parts of the website. But again, commercial break, www.awalkinthespirit.com. You'll find sermons. You'll find pod these podcasts. You'll find devotions slash meditations. You'll find digging deeper into certain scripture and taking the application deep like uh, like Jesus did. You know, he took the word of God and he took principles and he went deeper with them and gave some incredible examples. And, and that's what uh, I try to learn from Jesus when, I, when I'm going through a scripture on the digging deeper. You, I, I hope you enjoy and learn and grow in grace with those. Everything's there for you. And now there is Bible studies as well. And when I say Bible studies, I say lectures. Um, you can find lectures on the drop down from the resources tab. And these lectures, there's, I believe, one, two, or three. I think there's two so far, maybe three. Um, <clears throat> they're Bible college level courses that are, that, that are very rich in education. Very rich. So it's like a mini Bible college. And all I'm doing here is trying to bring the Bible college to those who can't afford it. To those who maybe cannot go to Bible college. Well, I have something to offer. And uh, these words and these studies, they are not my own. The words, yes. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I take the uh, the template. I take the... Um, uh, uh, the, the the bullet points that are given from Steve Lawson, who is uh, a Reformation teacher and preacher. So I don't want to lay claim, um, you know, to the outlines. These outlines are from Stephen Lawson from uh, Ligonier Ministries. And so, you know, I just, you know, want to make sure because it could be patent pending. <laughs> and plus he deserves, you know, the the uh, honor of me, you know, telling you who he is, Steve Lawson uh, from the Reformation um, and Ligonier Ministries. Uh, I use his template. But yes, I do make sure that the oneness of God is understood uh, through his Trinitarian viewpoint. And, and just like R.C. Sprawl from uh, Ligonier has, has talked to many evangelicals and may not uh, believe everything in the same way. Look, both of us, Pentecostals, Apostolics, and Trinitarians, uh, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And that Jesus came from the Father. And that Jesus is the only way to God. And so uh, we meet there. And again... Again, I'm very, very blessed uh, to be able to use these outlines of Steve Lawson's and, um, and then, you know, in my own teaching style, uh, bring it before you. Anyway, that's enough. Lies, lies, lies. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Let's pray together. Let's walk circumspectly together. Let's work together on becoming more honest people, more honest Christians. And if you don't know God, but you want to know more about them, again, www.awalkinthespirit.com and click on the tab. Um, it was called Knowing God, but I think that it's actually different now. Um, this tab, I believe, is I Want to Know God. And it's at the very top, the button at the very top of the website, I Want to Know God. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at S is in Sam, D is in David, C is in Cat, SDC Preacher at gmail.com. This is Brother Steve Cameron with you at WITS Radio Podcast, and I thank you for joining me today. God bless you.